Hello YouTube. Uh, today is day 10 and I'm finally vlogging before 11 because I'm probably going to actually go to bed at 11 this time. So I've got to vlog quickly. Uh, today, since uh, because it's the 10th, I'm going to tell you about uh, me and my girlfriend because that's because we started dating on the 10th of December. And I'm sure most of you watching this are going to think this is lame or boring or something. Or at least think I'm lame and boring or something. Um, but just kind of a brief uh, brief backstory of how we got together, I guess. Uh, met freshman year of high school in PE. And she used to step on the back of my shoes as I was walking. But it wouldn't give me a flat tire, which is why she would like walk in sync with me stepping on the back of my shoes as we walked which some people might think like oh well she was rude or blah 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 but it, it was just fun like we knew we were just joking around and stuff um, but then we also had English together and we were talking about that and it wasn't actually until like sophomore year in the fall uh, that I really started to have a crush on her I guess and then one of her friends came up to me, or before that, uh, one of our mutual friends was asking me who I liked, so then I told her I liked Christine, my girlfriend, and then she told me, okay, well, Christine likes you too, but I'm going to go tell her that you like her, so you can't, like, say that you like her first, I guess. And then as I was walking back to where we all hang out, one of her other friends who I didn't know, uh, came up to me and was like, oh, hey, well, if you're going to be with Christine, then you better, like, be okay with me, and if you hurt her, then I'll hurt you, blah de blah And pretty much everyone in our group heard that. Uh, so that was pretty funny, because then it was kind of established in public before we had ever talked to each other about it that we had feelings for each other. And that was November 20th. And then that was the Thursday before Thanksgiving break. So we didn't actually get to talk <laughs> at all about it because we were too nervous to actually say anything Thursday and Friday. Uh, so then that whole week we didn't talk um, because I didn't have her email and I didn't have a phone at that time so I couldn't text her or anything. Um, so then when we came back from the break we started actually talking about all the you know feelings and relationships and whatnot. And then it was December 10th that we actually made it official that we were going to be dating. So then, since then, we've had sort of like a two anniversary thing for the November 20th and December 10th. Um, I mean, we don't like go all extravagant to do anything on those days, but we just sort of like say happy month, of, well, we say month anniversaries for like each month, which I'm sure plenty of you are like, oh, well, that's lame, and maybe one of you is like, oh, that's cute, but Beside the point, that's what we do. Um, I've been keeping track of how many months it's been. So today was 54, 52 months uh, for the December 10th, and then November 20th, or not November 20th, uh, just April 20th will be the 53rd month for like our anniversary of knowing that we liked each other and then anniversary of when we actually got together, which was December 10th. Um, so I'm not really sure why I'm talking about this, just because it's something to talk about. Uh, something that I can talk about quickly, because I'm not going to be vlog making this too long of a vlog. Or maybe I will, I don't know yet, because it's only about four minutes in. Uh, what else should I talk about? Uh, dreams. Um, I mentioned yesterday, talking about the dream that I had, and seeing that the title of Jason Monday's video was Dreams, but then I didn't actually watch it till today, so he was talking about three dreams. I forgot what the order was or what specifically it was, but like one was the craziest, one was a reoccurring one, one was a good dream or bad dream or something. <clears throat> I will say, I do fly a few times in my dreams, but it's the way I fly is that I have to really believe and be totally confident that yes, I can fly, and then I'll actually fly. Um, which is kind of funny because I remember specifically there was this one dream where it's sort of like a Peter Pan themed, themed dream and I got the pixie dust and then I was thinking okay well how do I fly now and then I had all these like different 
rules on being a certain temperature and doing crazy stuff to be able to fly. And it wasn't until I woke up that I was like, wait a minute, I'm just supposed to think of a happy thought and then I'm supposed to be able to fly. What was with all that crazy rules? But anyways, besides that point, um, there was this one kind of reoccurring nightmare that I had a couple times. I haven't had it in this long time. I can't remember the last time I had it, but I know I did have it about three or four times. Where I was in uh, my cousin's house. We used to live with uh, my cousins uh, for two years. Uh, but I was in that house, and in, we lived in the massive. Not only we lived in uh, me, my brother, my sister, and my two cousins all shared the master bedroom. Um, so in the dream, I was in there, and I would either have to go through one door into the bathroom, the master bath, I guess it was, um, and I'd have to pick up some strange um, material element thing out of some pocket and then bring it back to the bedroom and then I'd like lay it out like a sheet and it'd be some kind of rainbow neon color and if it was too thin like I didn't grab enough then my breathing would get really shallow or quick I guess and then if it was too much then I'd start breathing really deep and it'd be really hard for me to breathe either way and I could never really find that one sweet spot and after I go from the bathroom to get the item, then I would have to go through the other door into the hallway, which led to some totally not our house uh, place. And I'd have to reach into these random pockets and find this material that I would go back and do the whole thing over again. And that dream always freaked me out, because it would always make me breathe, like, really not good. Because um, then I'd always wake up out of breath or something. Um, but this other dream, it was, it's kind of a set of dreams, but it's mostly just this one dream where it was totally random, where I'd walk into my cousin's house, and I like walked across the living room and turned right into the kitchen, and when I looked back to the living room, it was just this vast ocean in the middle of the night. Um, it reminded me of the Fantastic Four like ending scene when they're on the boat in, in the ocean. Ocean? Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, but that was like right at the end of the kitchen leading into the living room. But in the kitchen, my high school librarian was across the counter, like kind of uh, elbows on the counter looking at us as if she was at her desk in the library or something. And I forgot if she actually said anything. But I remember she was there, and I had this book. No, was it a book at the first time? No, it wasn't a book first. It was, uh, I had a cup, and I think it was a slice of bread or pizza that was, like, really dried. And the cup had a bit of water in it, and I, I'm pretty sure I remember this right. I had to put the cup down on the table, put the bread over it, and then the cup turned into this big, uh, like, glass bowl of bubbling water, and when the pizza fell in, it turned into a book, somehow, something like that. Uh, and I pulled the book out, because apparently it wasn't boiling hot anymore. Um, and I was reading a bit, and it said something about some trip or adventure spell thing to uh, recover lost fathers, meaning like bad parents, like not just, oh, well, they weren't a very good parent, but like they were bad parents. Like I'm. I don't mean any kind of like assumption or judgment, but I'm guessing a lot of people know what I mean when I say um, bad parent. Like not just a bad parent, but a bad person, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so then I had to go on this quest where I had to take everyone I knew, like, ever, even fictional TV characters that apparently became real to talk with me, like characters from Heroes or Lost. Uh, I'm going to go on this massive journey uh, throughout these few, uh, or a bunch of obstacles. And the first one I remember is I was walking, or we were all walking along this like cliff, and it looked like the cliff started bleeding, like at certain points, the I guess like the blood would start pouring out, and there's this giant like cave, like square, rectangular, cut out from the mountain that we all had to hide in there because like the bleeding was a warning that these bugs were coming 
and uh, as we all hid up against the side, like inside of the cave, it was, I guess, maybe the size of a house. That size, a uh, hole, square cut, I guess. Um, and we were all kind of hiding in there, but like the light was in there, so we weren't really in any shade. And there's one guy standing near the entrance. I forgot who it was, but I think it was like some TV character. And he was like shouting at this big group of us, saying that we couldn't make like the SH sound or the T sound or the CH sound or something because the bugs could only hear that sound. But then he kept repeating it over and over again. So these giant bugs that reminded me of uh, enemies in Resident Evil 5. I can't remember what they were called. Uh, but the giant bug praying mantis looking things. Not really praying mantis. Um, I'm not really sure how, though, just how I would describe them. Kind of like a praying mantis mixed with a cockroach, I guess, is how I would describe it. Anyways, it came in just like ate that guy, and there was a whole bunch of them, and we all had to stay totally silent, because or else the bugs would see us, which made no sense. Um, but then eventually they flew away, and we kind of knew, like, okay, we're close, we gotta go. And then we all kept running, and then it looked like my uh, middle school baseball field, because uh, I play softball over the summer at that field. But anyways, um, like, saw the fence, and then the, what's it called? The, not stadium, uh, diamond, I guess? The fence that goes over the back of it. But it was all flooded. Uh, not totally flooded, but like ankle deep water flooded. So as we're running through, we see these trees. Um, big trees with like the roots that kind of come up uh, over the ground and as I'm running I see like ripples in the water as if something's moving and just I'm running in ankle deep water and then these tree branches come up and grab me and pull me underwater like as if I'm in the ocean or a sea or something uh, so I'm going underwater and I don't remember how but I'm pretty sure somehow I got out of that and then I look and I see this giant portal like um it reminded me of something from Warcraft, uh, Warcraft 3. Uh, I don't remember what they're called, but or if they have a name, but some kind of giant portal door on a hill. And I knew, okay, once we go through that, that's like when the real challenge begins. And I don't remember much after that. I don't remember if I actually made it to that portal or maybe I did see that and then drown or something. <sighs> but it was a very strange dream. And this is already a long vlog. <laughs> so back when I said that it wasn't going to be, it obviously was. Um, and I, I'll tell the rest of it uh, another time. It's not much, but since this is a long vlog already, and I've got four minutes until I should go to bed, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.